Fort Worth, Texas, and a mere 41 miles separate SMU and TCU. And it's time to put the old iron skillet on the grill. That's what they play for and some bragging rights. It's Fox College Football presented by Geico. Two old rivals today, SMU and TCU on Fox Sports 1. Craig Bowler, Jack, Joey Harrington, Ryan Neese will join us in just a moment. Glad you're with us and a big welcome to Fort Worth, Texas. We talk about Trevon Boykin. He quarterbacks TCU. Joey, as you know, he's got a nice arm, very strong. He's also got that runability. He's SMU's really biggest concern of the day. Yeah, Trevon Boykin is a fantastic athlete. Coach Patterson said he might be one of the four or five best athletes on the team, but he has the potential to be more than just a great athlete and be a great quarterback. He needs to improve on his decision making if he's going to go to get over that hump. Three weeks ago against Southeast Louisiana, two touchdown passes. Two weeks ago against Tech, two interceptions. It's the good and the bad with Trevon Boykin. When he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. Hey, Ryan, this guy can run. How, as a defender, do you try and stop a running quarterback? Well, Joey, it's going to be a it's going to be a challenge. But I tell you what, SMU's defense gets a boost, and they get a boost because Randall Joyner, the senior linebacker, is coming back from a leg injury. He's back in the starting lineup today. I like watching this linebacker. He's number five. He runs around the field. He's a playmaker on defense. He's aggressive. And we asked defensive coordinator Tom Mason, "Who's your emotional leader on defense?" He said, "Without a doubt, Randall Joyner. Not only will he have to be the emotional leader." the spark plug today but he's also the brains of the operation it's going to be his responsibility to line up the entire defense to slow down tcu and specifically boykin from running out of the pocket it's gonna be a great game fellas all right ryan smu and tcu here we go they're neighbors of the dallas fort worth metroplex they played this first game back in 1915 and today they meet for the 93rd time smu and tcu it's up next on fox sports one Texas and today it's mostly cloudy 82 degrees at game time and a chance of rain later on this afternoon June Jones the head coach of SMU sixth year in Dallas and has taken the Mustangs to four straight bowl games his counterpart Gary Patterson coaches TCU and he's with our Ryan Neese guys coach Patterson you've been a part of this program now for 15 years what makes this rivalry between SMU and TCU so special well it goes back a long time you know it's uh, long before I ever got here you know, it's about two teams that have historic programs that have had one national championship. TCU has played each other forever. Baylor's the only other team we haven't played as much. It's what we played SMU. So every year, it's the same thing. And Coach, you bring in one of the, the top-rated defenses. You guys are first in the Big 12 in interceptions and sacks. What do you guys need to do specifically to slow down SMU's offense? Well, the bottom line, you always got to get a pass through, but you got to contest. It's like basketball. you got to contest every shot. And the best way to play defense is to play great offense. So we got to move the ball and score points today. All right, Coach. Best of luck today. Thank Back you. up to you guys. All right, thank you, Coach. Ryan Neese will be hearing from all afternoon. SMU won the toss and chose to receive. SMU lost at Texas A&M last week. Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel, collected over 340 yards of total offense in that game. Jaden Oberchrome has it teed up at the 35-yard line. Kevin Pope back to receive, along with Blake Poston. TCU, Joey, one thing to watch. They have not played since losing at Texas Tech back on September 12th, 16 days ago. It's a long time, especially after coming off a loss. You know, Coach Patterson told us he had to up the intensity this week. He had to get the guys feeling like it's time to play some football. Really had to put them through some hitting drills, some contact drills that they hadn't seen since fall camp. We'll see if TCU comes out with some fire today. So here we go. On a cloudy afternoon, Oberkron puts a foot into it. And the iron skillet battle is underway. Eight yards deep on a knee. SMU no return. Blake Poston. Garrett Gilbert, 6'4", 223-pound senior out of Austin, Texas. He's been on a roll 310 yards a week ago. A school record, Joey. 
three straight games of 300 or more through the air. Well, you know, it, it's nice to see Garrett having this success. People don't remember, he was the Gatorade High School National Player of the Year in 2008. Went to UT with big fanfare, played in that national championship game when he took Colt McCoy's place, but has struggled since and ended up transferring to SMU. Great to see him having some success lately. Two backfield set. And we'll see June Jones' offense in motion here for the first time. First and 10, 25-yard line. Gilbert on a quick throw. On the hands, Jeremy Johnson, number 15, the wide receiver, makes his 24th grab of the season. Joey, let's check out the impact players of the game. Exactly. For SMU, keep an eye on all these receivers. They're going to be all over the place. For TCU, Jason Perrett, the corner, the All-American, is the one who's going to be in charge of locking down this what are we calling it? The, uh, the run and raid offense, I think? The combination of June Jones and Hal Mummy in the two most prolific passing offenses maybe in college football history. Well, they waste no time as college football continues to morph in this hurry-up offense. They put 83 plays up against Texas A&M last week, and they are running the ball. They needed a yard, yard and a half, and it's going to be fourth down at the 34-yard line. So Garrett Gilbert, three and out. And the Mustangs forced to punt on their first series. Oh, not a good one. Off the side of the foot. Let's see where the official will mark it. It went out of bounds around midfield. They're going to mark it at the 42-yard line. An eight-yard punt by Mike Loftus, who averages nearly 44 yards a kick. So now they mark it officially at the 47. It's a 13-yard boot. You know, it looked like he was trying to directionally kick that, Craig. Maybe try and pin it down in the corner. And just shanked it off the side of his foot there. Javon Boykin, we spoke about his ability to run past the football. Wayman James in the backfield. Now they'll go to the ground game on first and ten off the left side to the 42-yard line. And Greenbauer, the free safety with the hit. You know, for TCU, you're going to see a big dose of Wayman James and B.J. Catalan. Wayman coming off that knee injury from last year. Coach has said, you know, he needs to get it out of his mind that that, you know, the, the knee is okay. He needs to get over that mental hurdle of coming off a big knee injury. You know, you've seen it time and time again. Running backs need to get over the mental hurdle after the physical hurdle of recovery. Five wide receivers set up on second down and short. Looking, wanted to throw, now he runs, a flag is out, and he takes a hook slide at the 29-yard line, but a flag at the 36-yard line. Holding, offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, second down. That's Joey Hunt, the center. Our referee today, Todd LaPinta. I like the patience there by Trevon Boykin. Really, really set those blocks up. Maybe it was, you know, maybe it was wide open because he was holding, but he showed a lot of patience. Didn't rush into that, allowed the blocking to develop. That's one thing you really need to have as a quarterback is that that poise, the ability to just let things come to you. Finley pushes TCU back to a second down and 11. James again the long back. Up the middle, bounces off. One tackler, and they'll mark him at the 45-yard line. Knocked down by Zach Wood. TCU rolls in, 1-2, 0-1 in Big 12 play. Next week, they've got a battle with Oklahoma, and this is a game, as I mentioned, they haven't played in 16 days. And Gary Patterson made a very clear look. We had to go back to square one in a lot of a lot of ways, and almost, it was almost like a second training camp in the month of September. Yeah, I think people got down on this TCU, TCU team pretty quickly after playing LSU and Tech early in the season. But this is a team that has some extreme explosive potential. Third down and long as Boykin sets in the pocket throws. And it's just off the fingertips of Cam White. He's a big target, 6'3", 200-pound junior out of DeSoto, Texas. So both teams get the football. Both teams are going to punt on their first series. If you're TCU, you got to be really disappointed. To get the ball 
on SMU's side of the field to start the game. You had a chance to really capitalize on momentum and had a penalty there knock you back after you had a, what looked like, looked like a good drive going. Well, Joy, they had fine field position after that 13-yard punt. And now they're going to punt as Ethan Perry is set back inside his own 45. High flyer, Haynes. Kicks up a divot, and it bounces into the end zone at the three-yard line. 45-yard kick. SMU TCU, welcome to Fort Worth, Texas. Yep, it's big down Texas way, and we'll be back on Fox Sports 1. Second series for SMU. They roll in one and two. They're a new member of the new American Athletic Conference. Trying to recover from last week's loss to AM. 42-13. And boy, they put the football around. 80, over 83 plays a game. And Joe, it's 59 pass, 24 rush. This time it's on the ground. They're gonna throw it back out. Gilbert throws that deep ball on the money. Jeremy Johnson at the 32. Call it the 28-yard line. What a great ball by Gary Gilbert. You know, a lot of times you, you have the tendency to overthrow that. He's so wide open. Watch him. Stutter steps run right by the safety as a quarterback. I've been there. He's so, you say he's so open. He's so open. Just don't miss it. He threw a strike down the middle of the field. Big play for SMU. How about Casey Limchi? Threw that ball back, gentle like a pillow, and Gilbert launched it for 50 yards to Johnson. And SMU at the 30-yard line with fresh downs. Gilbert in the pocket, throws far side, right on the money. A couple of flags around as Johnson, who just, cat, who just caught that 50-yarder, is bounced out of bounds to the 19. Penalties, though, Joey, look, a big problem for SMU. So far, 36 coming in, make it 37 now. They had 16 flags last week for 111 yards in that loss to AM. Yeah, they moved the ball against Texas A&M. And if you just saw the score, you would have thought it was a blowout. But if you watch the game, they chunked their way all the way down the field. Then they ended up shooting themselves in the foot right before they scored. This was, the score was not indicative of the type of game that SMU played against Texas A&M. So the penalty puts the Mustangs back at the 40-yard line, first and 20. Prescott line in the backfield alongside Gilbert. Good protection. Throws off his back foot. Not a good decision. Picked off at the 25 by Hackett. The weak safety. Pressure came from Coons, number 97. And why did Gilbert throw that ball? That's his second pick, Joey, of the year. You know what? It looked like he was just trying to throw it into an open space. But you know what? Don't even try to get it close to a receiver. Just throw it away. Throw it into the third route. Watch the receiver coming across. Jammed on the route. You know what? He stopped. That wide receiver stopped his stopped his momentum as soon as he got bumped and needed to continue that route across the field. It was not an it was not a smart throw by Garrett Gilbert, but the wide receiver could have helped him out in that situation and at the very least knocked it down. Sixth interception of the season for TCU. And they've got the football now, first and ten at the 25-yard line. Boykin on a rollout. Now here's a decision. He tucks and runs. Hits that edge, flies out of bounds at the 32-yard line. You know, yesterday, Coach Patterson said, we've been able to create sacks and big turnovers because of the, not necessarily the huge edge rushers, but the, the steady play of our defensive line. And that's what they did there. They got the pressure right up the mid on, middle on Gary Gilbert and forced him into making a bad decision. And when you've got a secondary as good as TCU's, you're going to capitalize on those poor decisions. Hackett with his third interception of the season. He's a freshman, second team All-American. Three wides near side. On second down, out of the tackle, Cavalier. He's got room, and his hit at the pads at thigh high at the 48-yard line. Good tackle by Kenneth Acker. Here's today's four keys to the game. Hey, for TCU, do exactly what you just did right there. Run the ball efficiently because it's going to put Trevon Boykin in a good position to make good throws on second and short, third and short. For SMU, don't run the ball efficiently. Don't even don't even bother to run it. Just throw it. Throw for your short little games to put Garrett Gilbert in those same positions. You're going to do the same thing as TCU is trying to do, throwing the football. Not to be impressed with Catalan. Yards after the initial hit, he picks up 16 and a first down. High snap, they flip it off the Cavalon out of the backfield, and SMU just roars. 
Greenbauer, the free safety, stayed at home, played that ball extremely well, and uh, maybe about a loss of one. We've got an injured Mustang down. That's number 90, the right end, Zach Wood. So the trainers are out to look at Wood, a sophomore. And we'll step aside scoreless in Fort Worth on Fox Sports 1. Hey, guys, watch the block by Cam White here, number 88. He's going to cut block on Randall Joyner, the linebacker just back from injury. And watch how fast Randall gets up and still manages to make that play. Get in the, get in the mix. Hey, Ryan, how do you get up off a cut block like that? Joey, that's not easy, but that's a drill that linebackers constantly practice. And when you look at Randall Joyner coming back from a knee injury, his ability to use his hands, defeat the cut block, and then pop back up to make a play shows the type of athleticism he has. Breaking on second down. That falls out. It was pulled in by Ladarius Brown. And now we've got a possession change. Ball came out. He made the football move, Joey. Trying to gain yards upfield. And it pops out at the 33-yard line. Wow, you have to secure that ball, especially when you've got a chance to make a big play like this. Watch Trevon Boykin play action, throws a strike in there to Ladarius Brown. One, two, that safety comes in for the hit, and he just puts it on the ground. You can't do that, Craig. Chris Parks, the right corner, a senior, comes up and grabs the football. And so we've seen two turnovers here early, one by SMU, and now the fumble by TCU. And Garrett Gilbert back to work. Scoreless ball game. Just under, just over nine minutes left in this opening quarter. Gilbert again, good protection, throws up high in coverage. And just over the outstretched arms of Jeremy Johnson. Let's go down and check in again with Ryan. Joey, we all know that every receiver at the next level gets paid big bucks when they go across the middle or run a skinny post and are able to catch the ball right there. We saw the receiver get into the space on that off that skinny post, but he didn't realize that Jay Scott, number eight, the safety, was sitting there getting ready to blast him. Every receiver has to understand that you've got to secure the ball. That's a tough place to be, but you've got to make that play. Second down and 10, Gilbert dances, throws it to the flat, caught. Darius Joseph with the catch, his 32nd of the year, Sam Carter with the tackle. Joseph and Johnson, Joey, what a good combination. Little guys in there who do a great job in space. You know, SMU's wide receivers aren't going to be these big, giant, tall burners down the sideline but they're going to do a great job finding the zones and reading the, the the correct position to be for each pass play you know you look at the takeaways in 2012 37 they've had some struggles getting the ball away from their opponent but they pick one away here in this first quarter as prescott line runs it to the 45 yard line But in a game of this nature, a rivalry game, you can look at all the stats, but the emotions play such a big factor. Yeah, you, you need to be able to control your emotions, especially coming off a turnover like, like Garrett Gilbert did on the last possession. You're in TCU's territory again. You need to make smart decisions here on third down. Backs for split, third down three. TCU shows blitz off the corner. Here they come. Out of the pocket goes Gilbert. He's got the first down, and he is pushed out at the 39-yard line by Verrett, the corner, number two, Jason Verrett. Smart, smart play by Garrett Gilbert. Watch it here. Great coverage by TCU. The All-American Jason Verrett coming in and chasing him down from the backside, but it's a great decision by Garrett Gilbert not forcing the ball into coverage. Third and two. I think people underestimate how fast, how fast this guy is. He can run. Gilbert with fresh downs again, has good protection, dances, oh, nearly threw that ball for a second interception, and coming strong, the middle backer, Jonathan Anderson, number 41. Well, not just Jonathan Anderson, but Jason Barrett was who he was throwing the ball at. First team All-American last year, led the, the, the Big 12 with six interceptions as a junior. Garrett Gilbert needs to understand not just where the ball's going, but to whom he's throwing it at. Claps for the ball, second down, 10. Again, all day to throw. Ball batted down. A 
of the line of scrimmage incomplete. It's been an interesting road for Garrett Gilbert. And one stop is Texas. Yeah, Garrett was a, the 2008 National Player of the Year at a high school. A lot of fanfare coming to the University of Texas and played in that national championship game when Colt McCoy went down. He's had some bumps, but seems to finally be comfortable in an offense after his second year in this, we call it a run and shoot, the run and raid. The run and raid. Eighth play of this drive, third down and ten. Gilbert throws flat, caught at the 31st down and more to the 24 yard line goes Jeremy Johnson, who's been the big playmaker so far in this first quarter for SMU. Hey, watch this. Can we pause it right here? Pause it. This defender right here, TC, uh, uh, Garrett Gilbert is reading, waiting for him to sink underneath that corner. Instead, he just dumps it down, makes a nice decision, reads the zone very well, and didn't try and get too greedy. A pickup of 17 on the ground comes down. One, two, three, four. Horn Frogs run him down, led by Anderson and Mallet. Marcus Mallet, the Sam Strong side linebacker. A loss of two, second down and 12. Gilbert goes through his progression, good downfield coverage. He's got a player that breaks open, 81. Holman, they're going to bump him out of bounds at the four-yard line. Keenan Holman. Boy, what a fantastic job by the offensive line for SMU there. Giving Gary Gilbert all the time to see the field. Did he step out of bounds? Ooh, maybe right there. A blade or two of grass. And the lineman, the line official, was Johnny on the spot, so it's first and goal inside the five, call up the three and a half yard line. Line and Lynchy in the backfield. And how about if SMU can strike first here in the opening quarter? And SMU, they've had their struggles in the past against TCU in what they call the iron skillet game. I'm really impressed with Garrett Gilbert right now. He may have, you know, he threw an earlier interception, but he's come right back and let his team down the field. How about this drive? Now the 12th play. Second down goal. Just short of the goal line. Prescott line knocked down by Kindred. Number 26, the strong safety. Third down. So now third down and goal. This play, this, this uh, drive, two and a clock. We've hit the five-minute mark of the opening quarter. And I'm really surprised here that SMU has run the ball two times in a row. Uh, I don't think we'll see that the rest of the year. SMU two for two on third down conversions on this drive. Line alongside of Gilbert. The ball's in the air. Touchdown, SMU. Jeremy Johnson, the go-to receiver in this quarter. Gilbert connects with Jeremy Johnson and his first touchdown reception of the season. Watch the timing on this. Wham! Right as the ball, right as the receiver turns his head around, the ball is out. Great anticipation, great timing by Garrett Gilbert and his receiver, Jeremy Johnson. That, that's a sign to me, Craig, that Garrett is becoming more and more comfortable in this offense. He's anticipating the throws, making very nice decisions. Great throw and catch. Chase Hover with the PAT. He's now six of six on the season. It all started with the turnover. The Mustangs defense got the ball for Gilbert. And then Gilbert took it from there and throws his third touchdown of the season. 7-0 Mustangs on Fox Sports 1. 13 plays, 67 yards, four and a half minutes off the clock. But here's a stat that you got to just take a glance and, and stare at. 31 games. 16 and 0 when scoring first over, the, over those last 31 for June Jones. 0 and 15, Joey, when the opponent scores first. I have no idea the science behind that. Is it all emotion? You're up or you're down. Catalog, two yards deep, and he's knocked down at the 14 yard line. So an early touchdown by SMU on the road against their arch rival, TCU, up seven. Monday. Off 
offside. Kicking team, number 26. Five-yard penalty, free kick. So we're going to re-kick it as we went to break a late flag tossed in. And Todd LaPenta explaining things. I want to explain what this is. Uh, this is the iron skillet. And it is uh, a heavy... It looks like breakfast. It, it does. Uh, it's established back in 1915, and the winner of this game goes home with the iron skillet. Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> so let's re-kick it. TCU two yards deep. Nice run back. 29 yard line and so with the skillet I know Joey what you think about most often well, is what, uh, what do you uh, oh, let's no, go. we're talking I thought I was making breakfast. let's make breakfast yeah we're, it's an early kick day we usually do the night games so little it's brunch, brunch. exactly How about give me three eggs over easy before the next play uh, Ryan what do you want you want over easy or scrambled I'll take scrambled fellas that's a lot easier for me yeah a lot easier <laughs> The TCU, fresh downs, 30-yard line. They're down seven on their home field. And Boykin goes back to work. Let's line up in the shotgun. Got to be honest, Joey. Some eggs over easy, scrambled. Sounds good right now. Boykin on the give. James breaks out of the tackle, and on second effort, picks up five to the 35-yard line. Wayman James, 203-pound running back. And Joey averages over five yards a touch out of Sherman, Texas. I think any coordinator will take five yards for any for any touch. Right. Well, he, he's the career leader in yards per carry right now for TCU. And like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, coming back off a knee injury from last year, really has to get that. He's got the physical tools back. He needs to get the mental aspect back of being confident and cutting on that knee. James is busted and dropped for no gain back at the 35. SMU and TCU, they've been playing each other since 1915, but it was in 1946 when they started playing for the old iron skillet. Now, in pregame, an SMU fan was frying frog legs as a joke. A TCU fan thought that was going over the line and suggested the winner of the game would get the skillet and the frog legs. TCU won, got the skillet and the frog legs. And what do you know? A tradition and a trophy was born. Ryan, I got him here for you. Oh, you're fast right? cooker. Over easy. Scrambled. I think he wanted those scrambled. He on. wanted scrambled. I'm he wanted for over, over easy. easy, yeah. Third down, TCU. Boykin throws on target. Nice catch on the hands. Brandon Carter breaks one, two tackles. 47-yard line and move the chains. First down, Horn Frogs. You know, this is the first time we've seen Brandon Carter today. Coach, Coach Patterson said... He needs to learn how to play within the system. Brandon Carter is one of the most explosive players they have on offense, but has had some mental mistakes already in the season. A big fumble against LSU. Said he needs to learn to play within the system, but he's not going to play. But a big catch right there. His 11th reception of the season, first down. Boykin. That's a tackle and takes a seat. For a moment, Joe, you thought that play was going to break big. Well, there's always that ability when Trevon Boykin runs the football. We, we talked about it in the in, in the pregame. He is a fantastic athlete, a tremendous athlete, one of the best on the team. Also has a big arm, can throw the football, but needs to learn how to mesh those two together. And as soon as he does, he's going to be an explosive player in college football. Well, he blew a tire, ran out of his shoe, relaces. Well, that's the reason he didn't score a touchdown, right? Second down. After the loss of two, call it 12. Pavel on the lone back. Boykin up top and just overthrows Josh Doxson. And we got a flag sitting right on the lap of Boykin. He took a whipping. Love the pastor. Defense, number 94. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Bo Barnes, who is whistled for the 15-yard penalty. Let's take a Lowe's Never Stop Improving game break. Here's Patrick O'Neill. Pat hey, hey, Craig, thanks a lot. Number 11, Oklahoma State, Morgantown, taking on West Virginia. Mountaineers head coach Dana Holgerson used to be the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys. J.W. Walsh getting picked off by Ishmael Banks and good old-fashioned pick six. This would be reviewed as he dives. Hits the pylon, ruled a touchdown, tied at seven in the first. Craig and Joey, back to you. 
All right, terrific play. 7-7, West Virginia with a tough assignment next week as you look ahead to Baylor. Pavilion straight ahead. Big guards to the 31-yard line, and that tackling was led by the middle backer, Kevin Pope. Hey, going back to that rough and passing ball here, Craig. You just cannot hit the quarterback after he releases the ball. It's a tough thing to do if you're a defender, especially you're coming full board, trying to make a sack, trying to make a play. You have to learn how to pull up as soon as you see the ball out of the quarterback's hands. You saw that stat of 16 flags a week ago, already three here in the opening quarter. Three wide receivers, top of your screen, low snap. Boykin on the run, fires a dart across the middle. Bingo. Ty Sl Slanina, a true freshman out of East Bernard, Texas. Hey, Craig, that play was set up beautifully. We saw it earlier. I spoke about it. Trevon Boykin taking his time, setting up the run. They've run it twice with him now. Now they ran that same action and hit the receiver right over the middle. A pickup of 21. Flag is out. Offside. Defense. Number two. Happens to the goal. First down. Uh, a penalty again is going to hurt this SMU team because it gives you a real free play now five, six yards from the end zone. And watch this, Craig. Twice now, Trevon Boykin has set up the blocks and run this quarterback ISO. Now this time, does the same thing, starts to run towards the line of scrimmage, gets the linebackers to come up, throws it right over the top of him. Great setup by Trevon Boykin. Great play call by TCU. SMU strings it up, balls out! Boykin jumped on that loose ball. And what could have been another turnover, SMU was close, but TCU lives to play another day. A heads up play by Trevon Boykin there. Following his running back after the pitch. So we played the first quarter here at TCU. SMU with a one-yard touchdown throw up by seven on the Horn Frogs. Oh yeah, fear the frog. TCU, SMU, and the Mustangs up seven, but the Horn Frogs with a second down and seven. Boykin to the end zone. Was contact, yes, flag out. Josh Dodson was the intended receiver and there was contact. Kenneth Aker, the left corner, number 21, and the two officials wasted no time dropping yellow on the turf. Defense, number 21, automatic first down. Joey, again, it's the penalty bug that really bites at SMU. Well, that's been their Achilles heel all season, like we mentioned. Last week against a and they were moving the ball all over the place on offense. Had a couple key penalties. They've given up almost 100 yards go. per game with just flat penalties this season. You can't do that and win consistently. Three flags on this series alone has kept TCU sitting on the front porch. There's a run. There's a touchdown. Wayman James up the middle. James wiggles in from two yards out. And now Jaden Obercrome with a chance to tie this game. Early here in the second quarter, we've got a injured player down in the end zone. That's the left tackle, 56, James Dunbar. We'll step aside as the trainers are on the field, 7-6 SMU. Well, the good news is James Dunbar able to uh, jump off the field on his under his own power. Looked like they're retaping a left ankle. Big number 56. He's 6'6", 315. And now the PAT to come. Jaden Oberchrome, 9 for 9 this season. On point after attempts. Good snap. Pulls down. Kicks up. And we're tied at 7. <laughs> 
Joey Nine plays 70 yards, and James wiggles his way in from two yards. You know, this, this is TCU football. I mean, this is really what Gary Patterson loves to do. Run the ball, reduce the amount of plays that his guys are on the field. Very nice job by the TCU offensive line. You know, the, this, this offensive line only had one returning starter from last year. Only one guy on the line had any starting experience coming into this season. They've done a very nice job today opening up some big holes for both Wayman James and B.J. Catalan. You know, I think June Jones will have to continue to address the penalty issue because, remember, if TCU would have had that opening kick, remember, they had to reset and re-kick. They would have started at their own 11-yard line. and said that, draw, that drive started at the 30. These, these, these turnovers have been a killer for SMU. I mean, they really have. It, it prevents your defense from getting off the field. It gives TCU's offense more momentum. It stops you from scoring points. I mean, these turnovers, or excuse me, these penalties have hurt SMU in every area of the team. Overcrome, strong kick. Five yards deep, and Poston takes a knee. Hey, Craig, last time SMU was on the field, they really methodically worked it down against this TCU defense. Garrett Gilbert made some nice big throws down the field. He did it with his legs. Learning from the mistake he made on the first drive. And then you know what? Great timing to his wide receiver on the goal line where space is limited. You have to make quick, sharp decisions when you're down in the red zone because the back end line becomes a 12th defender for that defense, and your throwing windows just shrink up so much more. TCU taking advantage of not only turnovers, but the penalties that you spoke of. And now we've got a 7-7 game early here in the second quarter. Empty backfield is Gilbert from the shotgun. Slides to his right, finds a wide receiver, far side Johnson, Jeremy Johnson. Yeah, Kendrick, a strong safety with the tackle, pushed him out of bounds after pickup of a five at the 31. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. You saw it briefly there. When, when SMU went into an empty backfield, TCU checked to what looked like an all-out blitz. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw more of that today. From Bull, ball loose. TCU recovers. TCU. On top of that ball, the middle linebacker, Jonathan Anderson. Boy, how many times can you shoot yourself in the foot on the road, Greg? I mean, penalties, turnovers. This has become a, a common theme for SMU. They're moving the ball. They have the ability to move the ball up and down the field. But they, can't, they keep creating you know, self-inflicted wounds. You can't win, especially on the road, when you keep making these mistakes. Well, Mallet, the hero on the sideline, is now TCU after punching in a touchdown at the 30-yard line after the fumble recovery. Three wides near side, two up top is Boykin. On a keeper, SMU didn't buy it, stay at home, and he's knocked down after a pickup of three by Greenbauer, the free safety. Hey, Craig, if you're Prescott line here, you're not going to touch the ball a whole lot in this offense. You need to take advantage of your opportunities. This is an offense that's going to throw the ball 50 to 60 times a ball game. And if you're a running back for SMU, when you hold on to that ball, it needs to be precious. I know he's really going to be kicking himself when he gets back to the, when he got back to the sideline there. You no, know, June Jones, as I mentioned, his offense averages 59 pass attempts, 24 on the ground. And you're right, not a lot of opportunities to, to carry the rock and you let that one go out. Pick up a three, second down, seven. Penalty. Full start. Offense. Number 58. Five yard penalty. Second down. Patrick Morris, who's over the left guard position, a true freshman out of Denton, Texas. Is this a little rust? But I tell you what, they, uh, they've taken advantage of turnovers, but the flags are everywhere. Jumps to the 29. Randall Joyner 
who had that strained knee playing the buck linebacker in on the tackle. Three-year letterman, as you mentioned. You guys know, uh, and Ryan, the, the, the importance of his play today, especially on the road. He is the emotional man on that defensive side. You're absolutely right. Joyner is all over the place. And when he came to the sidelines before that, after that last series, he was in the guys' faces. He was the emotional guy. Hey, fellas, we got to clean things up. We got to get fired up. We got to make plays out here. Let's stop beating ourselves. Wicking on a quick throw. Bobbled the cot at the 25. Brandon Carter with his second catch. Joyner was close. I'll say he was close. He was right on top of him. That's, that's the kind of guy you love to have in the middle of your defense. Well, that's what makes a, a wide receiver bobble a ball. Exactly. That's what you, you saw it earlier in the earlier in the game when Ladarius Brown fumbled the ball on the post route, got hit by the safety. You saw Brandon Carter bobble the ball there, running into the middle of the defense. If you can intimidate wide receivers coming into the middle. Overcrome will try a 42-yard field goal, his longest of 46. He's 4-5 of five this year. Tries to swing it through the uprights. No. Overcrome misses from 42. And SMU, that, uh, that fumble, it stung, but it didn't hurt. 7-7 seven, seven in Fort Worth. That is June Jones, head coach of SMU in his sixth year. He's had great success along his journey, 15th season as a CFB head coach. He threw the football in Hawaii. He was in the National Football League head coach with Atlanta, San Diego. And the journey continues with SMU. Mustangs, Horn Frogs tied at seven. First and 10, 25 yard line, Gilbert in trouble and smartly throws that ball out of bounds. You know, Craig, June Jones has had a ton of success throwing the football, but he's been influenced. Was he out of the tackle box? There's a late flag dropped here. Often, number 11. Lost it down. Out the spot of the foul. Oh, my. Second down. Wow. Garrett Gilbert really struggling with some decisions there in the pocket today. Threw the ball late over the middle when he shouldn't have from the interception. And Joey, the old quarterback, you got to move out of that tackle box, and he's, he was sitting right in the middle of it. You need to have some awareness of where you are on the field. That's a loss of down. As Gilbert goes back to work deep in his own territory, tries to throw up top single coverage, and it's out of bounds along the 35-yard line. Keenan Holman, the intended receiver, had single coverage with Kevin White. It's amazing how quick a series can blow up on one play. Well, that's such a costly penalty because it's a, you lose the yardage, but it's also loss of down on an intentional grounding call. Very costly mistake for SMU, and again, Another self-inflicted wound. I mean, they keep on making these mistakes that hurt themselves. Gilbert takes a glance at the sideline. Everybody's standing all in purple here. At TCU, three wide receivers, top of your screen, and now a timeout is called by SNU. Timeout Mustangs, 11.44 left. First half in Fort Worth, tied at seven. You know, Craig, I've been in the position where you're trying to do the right thing. Garrett Gilbert trying to figure things out with the grounding call. He tried to learn, pause it right here. Here's the guy in the area, right there. Now let it go. Earlier in the game, he threw an interception because he was trying to get rid of the ball, threw it too close to his guy. This time he just threw it over his head. Well, June Jones was right there to help his quarterback. Now on third down and a mile, Gilbert stands tall in the pocket, over the middle, right on the money. It's going to be just shy of the first down at the 32-yard line. They needed to get to the 35-yard line. Nice catch by Darius Joseph. And that brings up short yardage. It's going to be fourth. Let's go downstairs. Here's Ryan. Craig and Joey, that was a 20-yard dig route by Darius Joseph. And you know what? That was a great route by him. But I tell you, the offensive line did a great job protection. Joey, you got to agree. Anytime you have that long a route, you got to protect the quarterback for a longer period of time. 
exactly right. You're exactly right. I was just about to say what a great job Garrett Gilbert did in the pocket, sliding to find that, find that open space, staying in there and throwing a deep route over the middle. Last time Loftus booted a 13-yard kick this time. And it makes a kick back to the 16. So Loftus lofts one for 51 yards. And Joey, time to look at the Nissan Heisman watch. You know, Craig, at this point in the season, you could put a handful of guys in there. But here, here's my top three. A.J. McCarron, a couple weeks ago against A&M, the biggest game of the year, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been nails for Alabama and doesn't get the credit he deserves. Marcus Mariota played a great game against Tennessee and Virginia. Brent Hundley went on the road at Nebraska and just lit him up. The reason I put these three guys in there is because they've played teams right now. You know, Oregon played t Tennessee and Virginia. Uh, Alabama played A&M. UCLA's played Nebraska. A lot of the others haven't quite played the, the true tests yet. You mean Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football, you're not putting in the top three to repeat? Not when you turn the ball over against Alabama and lose that ball game. I think the guy on the other side of the ball outplayed him. TCU back with a football, 7-7 ball game. Straight ahead football. James to the 21. I think right now, as you mentioned, a lot of names are in the mix. Teddy Bridgewater. Lake Seastrunk, Baylor. Aaron Murray. A lot of guys you can put in this, in this category. I, I didn't put Aaron Murray in there because they lost a game to Clemson. I'm sure he'll work his way out of it as the season goes on. A big one today against LSU. But the reality is to win the Heisman, you got to win the big games and perform well in them. James alongside Boykin. On a play action, now Boykin dancing. Slings it, and he'll throw it out of bounds. About two rows into the stands. Hey, Ron, I got a feeling you like that, that player from what, UCLA? Of course I like the guy from UCLA. You guys know that. I mean, and it's not just because I'm an alumni of UCLA, but I honestly think Brent Hudley, the way he is able to throw the ball around, his athleticism, his ability to run, he's an impressive guy. He may not get all the votes because he plays in the West Coast. He plays late, late in the day, so sometimes people don't get a chance to see him. But when you watch this guy in the film, he is confident. And the other guy I love is Johnny Menzel. He continues to dazzle. Joey, I know you didn't like him, but this guy, he continues to make plays out there on the football field. TCU, one of three on third down conversions. They need seven to keep this drive alive, and Boykin is down at the 15. Zach Wood, you know, we know his escapability. Boykin, but not this time. Wood laid the wood on him. Yeah, this time he just gets corralled. Nice job by the defensive line of SMU, getting pressure with just a four-man rush allowing seven players to stay back in coverage, and, and Trevon Boykin just got swallowed up by a great pass rush by SMU. Kenneth Acker back to receive for SMU. Ethan Perry set the punt at his five-yard line, just got it off. Fair catch, wave four at the 39, call it the 40-yard line. Coming up next, Fox College Saturday continues as Louisiana Tech battles Army from the historic Cotton Bowl right here on Fox Sports 1. Then on Fox, it's a Pac-12 battle between Arizona, undefeated, and 16th-ranked Washington. Fox Sports, your home for college football all season long. Hey, what a job Steve Sarkeesian's done. That new stadium. Tremendous job up there in Seattle. I think Washington is, is a team to watch out for. Keith Price, a couple of years ago as a sophomore, lit the college world on fire, and then last year, lost all his help. People wonder, what happened to Keith Price? He you was know nicked what? up a lot as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. When you try and carry the team by yourself, you're going to struggle, but he's got people helping him out this year. I really like Washington. 9 of 15, 140 yards for Garrett Gilbert. They've got the ball, fresh downs, 40-yard line. He'll roll to his right. Plenty of time, lobs the ball up top in traffic. There was some contact, no flags came out, and the ball falls incomplete at the 20-yard line. Keenan Holman was battling Kevin White at the 25-yard line. Well, I think people are going to be battling Kevin White a lot this year because they're going to be throwing away from Jason Verrett. Hey, hey, Kevin White, let me tell you what a great job he did in the LSU game against that passing attack from the SEC. He's going to be get a lot of action with people staying away from him. Lynchy, ball carrier, just shy of the first down. they will bring up third down and short. Kindred and Hackett team up to make the tackle. Limchi, a, a sophomore out of Katy, Texas. 
Only came in with nine carries on the year. And again, not a lot of carries for this SMU offense. Shotgun is Gilbert, third and short. Gilbert. Try to try to fake out that TCU front. They didn't bite. He pumped a little bit downfield, then tucked it, and they drop him for a loss back to the 45. <laughs> well, Craig, he tucked it because he had a guy coming free, Marcus Mallett, running right up the middle here. Nobody even touches him. You got to get at least a hand on him, slow him down. Or, or Garrett Gilbert needs to get the ball out of his hands. One of the two. You're either going to pick him up in protection, or you're going to pick him up in your hot reads in your route. How about June Jones? They set up for a fourth down try, and now a timeout called. And it forces TCU to call a timeout because they didn't get a, their defense set on the field. Well, I don't think they expected him to go for it on fourth and five on their own 45-yard line. Gary Patterson, emotional. He'll do a lot of barking during four hours of football. There's June Jones. We had a great talk with Gary Patterson yesterday, Kansas State grad, intense in his 13th year. He's the all-time winningest coach here at TCU, and they have put together a fabulous stadium. He has done a great job of turning TCU, really a small school, into a national college power. I mean, they were the team with Boise State that everybody talked about, the BCS busters for so long. Now that they're part of the Big 12 Conference, he's committed to building a championship program here at TCU. SMU now will punt away. Nice punt, turns it over, five-yard line, and bounces into the end zone. That's a 55-yard punt after that shaky start by Loftus. It's been quite a career. Highest win percentage among active FBS coaches. Patterson's name alongside Chris Peterson, Urban Meyer, Bob Stoops at Oklahoma. It's a pretty good company right there. A lot of football games being won by these four programs. And, and it, it speaks to not just the win now mentality, but the longevity. You know, Coach Patterson is a big picture guy. He does things the right way. And isn't, isn't shaken by, by immediate success. He wants to be a long-term Big 12 champion. Seven, seven game, clock under eight minutes in this first half. Boykin from the shotgun, hands it off, there goes the helmet. How about Padalon? His hat was just ripped off as he ran through the line. Now the rule indicates a player has to come off the field when the helmet pops off. Well, the new rule also is that play stops immediately, and B.J. Catalan broke through the second line here. You see his helmet come off at the line of scrimmage, but he was getting dragged down by a safety at the end of this play, and had he gotten out of this tackle, could have been running for a long time. Boy, with the hat off, he still throws the stiff arm. <laughs> you know, that football is running through your blood. Well, you know what? That's what the coaches wanted to see from B.J. Catalan. He's the quicker of the two running backs, the guy who maybe has a tendency to try and break everything big to the outside. They wanted to see B.J. Catalan run between the tackles, put his nose down, and get some tough yardage. And, and sometimes say, you know what? A two-yard gain is better than trying to break a big one and get the two-yard loss. He picks up two. Second down eight. And a sidearm pro falls incomplete down at the 40-yard line. Let's go downstairs. Ryan Neese, Gary Patterson. He's got, uh, he's got a lot of respect around college football, does he not? He absolutely has a lot of respect, and especially with the high school kids on the national level. With the, what he's done in this program in a short period of time, it, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tremendous. And kudos to him for his ability to turn things around here. We had a chance to visit with him for quite some time yesterday, and it wasn't an easy, an easy job, but he's done a great job job here getting this program to be nationally respected on the high school level which has allowed him to recruit the type of talent they have on the field today now he's connected with his students as well with yeah. the ipad little <laughs> twitter feed once in a while he loves his twitter account boykin sets up the throw slings it across midfield and nearly picked off he wanted dodson but it was Aker who leaned out number 21 the left corner as he was looking for a pick that brings up fourth and eight you saw a little bit of hesitation in the throwing motion there from Trevon Boykin. You know, he kind of had a little bit of a pump fake, and instead of throwing the ball underneath to the guy in the flat, 
who was the open guy but wasn't probably going to get the first down. He tried to force one into a deep dig. Ethan Perry. Gets the TCU roll, and SMU will jump on it at the 28-yard line. So Garrett Gilbert, 7-7, SMU, TCU. Gilbert going back to work. He's got the strong arm of S for SMU. Oh, the purple. It's proud here. And Fort Worth, total yards, 156 for the Mustangs. TCU just 89 yards. Enjoy the big, the big story, miscues. SMU, two turnovers, six penalties, 41 yards. Well, they're dom dominating the ball on both sides, but just, just shooting themselves in the foot with the penalties and the turnovers. Gilbert stands in the pocket, flushed. It collapses, and he tries to run, but cannot escape the grasp of John Lewis as they swing him down at the 26-yard line. And you know what? This TCU defensive line is starting to get to Garrett Gilbert. They're getting pressure on him. But it's not necessarily something that the offensive line is missing. This is just great coverage by the TCU secondary. They've got an All-American on one side of the field. They've got Kevin White, who's playing tremendous at the other corner. This secondary is doing a great job covering routes all over the field, which allows the TCU defensive line to eventually get into the backfield. A loss of one, second down 11. Shotgun again, Gilbert throws. Underneath, it's a short game. Johnson, who was a big playmaker in the first quarter, is knocked out at the 29 by Chris Hackett. Enjoy the old gunslinger that you are, or were. I guess I have to speak in, in, <laughs> I can in still past sling tense. It, right? But the bottom line is, quarterbacks have, what, two, three seconds at the most to let that ball fly. After that, you really haven't treated your offensive line well. Exactly. You've got a, you've got an internal clock that starts to go off, and you'll see quarterbacks, they get it called happy feet. You know, you just kind of start to get a little antsy in that pocket after that internal clock goes goes too far. Horn Frog fans getting noisy on third down and 10. Gilbert again, pressured, flushed, has room, throws, and coming back to help is Holman number 81 at the 42 yard line and move the chains what a pass off the hand of gilbert and this is the exact this is what can go wrong if that pressure doesn't contain the quarterback because you cannot ask the secondary to cover that long the receiver is eventually going to get open great job by garrett delivering a strike and a pickup a 13 back to the air quick throw one tackle broken and another as darius joseph Came in with 32 receptions out of Abilene, Texas. Now watch this. I, I bet you they get some tempo going here, Craig. They're starting to build a little momentum and expect this SMU offense to start rolling quickly now. They line up in the eye formation, three wide, top of your screen. It's the hurry up, and you mentioned that momentum, trying to get it back. Nice cut back. Lynchy. Oh, hits a wall back at the 49. Nice job reversing his field but he's got to know where that first down marker is. All he needed was a yard. Don't try and make a big play every time. Just dive forward here at the collision at the very end. He doesn't need it. He's trying to break it big to the outside, duck your head up and slide inside of it. Instead, he gets stuffed and loses a half yard, and now you're third and two instead of first down. Nice tackle by Carter using the pads to knock him down to lose about a half a yard. Third down, call it two. Gilbert. Ball is out, incomplete, fourth down, the intended receiver, Jeremy Johnson. And TCU's getting physical here on this last couple of plays. This TCU de defense is aggressive, and it starts in their secondary. I mean, the, the time that they give this defensive line to get into the backfield is, is incredible. A fantastic cover secondary. I mean, the, these guys are all over the field, and they're allowing the front seven to just provide pressure on Gary Gilbert. So Loftus jumps on to kick it away at his own 39. Nice punt, high hanger. And it's five yards deep in the end zone. So a touchback in TCU. Back on offense, 7-7 time. Coming up, it's a Pizza Hut halftime report. Here's Rob Stone with a preview. Rob? All right, thank you, Rob. A lot of storylines in college football. As we now are just going to head into the month of October come up. Things just start to get good now. Yeah, right now. Because, you know, after three weeks, as you head into the fourth, you you really know what your team is, right. who you have, and what the what you have to do to move forward. When you start playing the meaningful conference games that really determine the outcome of your uh, outcome of your season. 
Looking on a play action pass. Stands, throws, deep up top. And a near circus catch. Ty Slanina crawled up the ladder, came up empty at the 30 yard line. Possible upset in the SEC. Let's get more back to Los Angeles. Here's Patrick O'Neill. Hey, Craig, yeah, you heard Rob just mention South Carolina, and here comes a storm. A storm Johnson for UCF, a touchdown. It's UCF leading the Gamecocks 10 0. The story for the old ball coach, their quarterback, Connor Shaw. He is out of the game with a shoulder sprain. It's 10 0. Craig and Joy, back to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. Plenty of time left in that game, but the old ball coach is going to have to do some coaching. Yeah, this is kind of shot tough. He's a very tough, tough quarterback there in South Carolina. Got a flag out. SMU is trying to Play blitz game. up the middle. Offense number two. And they catch a break. Stick it down. Delay a game. Here, Gary Patterson. You know, he told us that he is one of the most intense. He understands that too. He's one of the most intense coaches in college football for four hours every Saturday. Yeah, that's what he said. From 11 to 3 today, yeah. he's going to be he's going to be an intense guy. Second down after the penalty and 15 yards. Three wide receivers near side. As a new show on blitz, here they come. Boykin pressed out of the pocket. Under, he goes at the five-yard line. Randall Joyner, hello. Kevin Pope came along for the ride. How happy is SMU to have Randall Joyner back at linebacker for him? He just provided an emotional lift. He's been all over the field, sideline to sideline, making plays on wideouts. Now he's getting through on a, uh, on a blitz right up the middle. SMU brought all-out pressure that, that on that play, trying to get to Trevon Boykin, forced him to make a bad decision, but he just ate it and took the sack. SMU's going to play soft in the secondary on third down and 25. Two sacks. Already today in the end zone, Boykin throws, caught, and downed at the eight yard line. Chris Parks right on top of Ladarius Brown, and now SMU looks to get this ball back. Joey, fine field position under four minutes left in the first half. Well, we've seen this all day. TCU had great field position to start the game and couldn't capitalize. SMU's had the ball deep in TCU's territory and turned it over. SMU needs to take advantage of this great, great field position that they're going to get after this punt. Ethan Perry out of his own end zone. Acker back at midfield for SMU. Pressure blocked. That ball is up. Taken. SMU inside the five yard line. Special teams coming through with the play. Number 10, he plays nickel on defense. Ajay Montez, the redshirt freshman at SMU with a chance to go on top here late in the first half. Huge momentum swing right before halftime here. Critical that SMU punches this ball in for a touchdown. A chance on the flip side for TCU to stop this momentum and hold them to a field goal. This is a time when the TCU defense needs to bow their neck and make a stand. It was a first block punt for Perry this year. And now SMU first and goal just outside the one yard line. Gilbert, split backfield. Hands it off. Horn Frogs right on top of Prescott line. No gain, second and goal. Davion Pearson was the first to meet line number 57. And we saw this on their last drive when they were inside the five yard line. They ran it two times on first and second and goal, and then Garrett threw a strike on third down for touchdown. Let's see if they run the ball again. Line lines up alongside Gilbert. Low snap, fumbles it, in trouble. Down he goes, ball comes out. TCU. A free-for-all. TCU had it momentarily. SMU recovers back at the 21-yard line. And again, SMU shooting themselves in the foot in a situation where they have a chance to, to go up right before halftime, create the momentum. Look, SMU is outplaying TCU up to this point. 
they have to stop hurting themselves. Look at Jonathan Anderson, middle backer, 41. He saw that ball. Gilbert was hanging it out like a loaf of bread. He punched away at it, and it came out. Well, that, that Gilbert was hanging it out like a loaf of bread because the snap was low. These are the little things that, that are the difference between a great team, a good team, and, and a really average team. They can throw the ball all over the field, but if they don't make the do the little things, they're, they're not going to win a lot of ball games. Got a player down, gets a hand up. Terrell Lathan, number 90. But it all started with a low snap. And Gilbert, well, he tried to pick it up instead of just laying on it. And the ball pops out. Down around the ankles. You got to catch it. What was... Even though it's low, you got to catch that. What was first and goal at the one is now third down goal back at the 22-yard line. And Craig, there aren't many plays in the playbook that uh, go for a 22-yard touchdown on third down. June Jones will line three wide receivers up high. Gilbert will line up with a shotgun. Play clock to three, got the snap away. He's going to keep it. Stutters to the middle of the field, trying to set up a field goal. Smart play at the 17-yard line. He was hit by Anderson, the middle linebacker. And just because Garrett has a, a big arm doesn't mean he can't run the ball. He, he runs the ball fairly well. Not the fastest guy in the world, but a smooth runner. I like the play call. Fourth and goal. SMU setting up for a field goal. Gary Patterson. Puts the deep freeze on a little bit on Hover, and he calls a timeout. Well, you know what else he's doing, Craig, is he's trying to get as much time as he can for Trevon Boykin and this TCU offense to try and get some points and answer right before halftime. Well, this attempt is all set up by a block punt. Enjoyed three minutes ago. You thought it was going to be an easy touchdown for SMU, but then they fumbled the ball, and now they're pushed back, and they will try for a 34-yard field goal. Jackson Mitchell came in for that special teams play, and now it will be from 34 yards. Chase Hover, Plano, Texas, a senior. Straight away. It's up. And good. From 34 and SMU with a three-point lead on the road. If I'm SMU, I'm disappointed about that. You need to get seven. 34-yard field goal makes it 10-7. How about some famous former students who attended Southern Methodist University? I think you'll know them well. Aaron Spelling, TV producer. Oversaw shows here on Fox, Academy Award-winning actress Kathy Bates, Laura Bush, our former first lady, and the late Payne Stewart, the golfer known for his eccentric wardrobe, won three major championships. SMU, TCU, just 41 miles separate these two schools. The iron skillet is what they play for. It all started back in 1915. You've used that skill with a couple times, bacon, eggs. Well, I used it just a few minutes ago, right? What's next at halftime? Ryan, Ryan wanted to scramble. Well, I got to get your over easy. SMU, strong kick, no return. As Catalan takes a knee five yards deep. So you've got a minute. It's a close game. It's been flags and turnovers so far in this first half on both sides of the football. Yeah. This is a situation now where the TCU coaches want to see how Trevon Boykin manages the two-minute offense. He has a chance to go down with a timeout to get some points back on the back on the board and grab a little momentum going into halftime. However, the one thing you cannot afford to do is make a mistake and turn the football over. I think you make an interesting point because he needs to go in with momentum and confidence because TCU has the ball to start the second half. Right. Boykin throws a dart and nearly intercepted. Through behind the intended receiver, Josh Doxson, and it's Chris Parks, a senior, who'd like to have that football back. And you know, Craig, he's done this a couple times now. Trevon Boykin throwing off his back foot, 
drop the release a little bit, throwing a little bit sidearm. You see that from quarterbacks from time to time when you get pressure. He didn't have any pressure in his face that time. He needs to step into that ball and throw it, deliver it on time. He cannot let the previous plays affect this one. Second down, three wide receivers near side. Working on a quick throw. A little pitch and catch on the hands of Cam White. SMU gains some confidence as that defense swarms him down at the 37. And a first down as the clock hits 47 seconds left. Now that's the way you want to deliver a ball if you're Trevon Boykin. Step in, good high release. The guy's got a live arm now. Trevon can throw the football. Stay with your mechanics, make good decisions, and you'll move this football. Boykin slings it again, near side, and just through the hands of Doxon. That know brings you knew up this third about down. Did you know this about Dodson? The, the only active player to score a touchdown against the current team he's playing with? A that's, transfer that's from Wyoming. Wyoming. Yep, a couple years ago, scored a touchdown against TCU, and then a couple weeks ago against Southeast Louisiana, had a touchdown for TCU. Second down. Boykin six yards deep, shotgun, pedals back. Once the home run ball goes up top, man, coverage, and knocked away. <laughs> Kenneth Aker knocked that ball away from Jawan Story, number 81, and a great clamp down cover corner play. Fantastic timing by Kenneth Aker. Second team All-Conference USA last year. He's started every game for SMU the last two years. He's, he holds a little special place in my heart, Craig, because he went to high school about four blocks away from where I live at Grant High School in Portland. He's the only player in the PIL to be the offensive and defensive player of the year two times in a row. How about that? That's impressive. Third down. Working again with his eyes downfield, has room to run. It closes in a hurry, skips out of a tackle and dances out of bounds. Smart play stops the clock at the 41-yard line. Remember, TCU still has a timeout if needed with 17 seconds remaining here in the first half. Well, here's the decision. Do you keep it and try and keep the drive going on fourth down, or do you punch it away? It looks like Gary Patterson's going to punt this ball and be satisfied with being down three points going into halftime here. This is the right decision. You yeah. can't afford to give SMU the ball back, even though it's only 17 seconds. You can't afford them to give the ball back on your own side of the field. And remember, you try to go in with a little bit of success, and uh, you get the ball to start the third quarter. Last time, SMU blew through the line for a block. And they're bringing pressure again. Now the layoff to set up the return. High hanger. No return for Acker at the 21-yard line. The new season of the Ultimate Fighter is powerful. It's relentless. It's epic. And it's just getting started. Catch the show. Critics say delivers the goods and see why they call Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate the new best rivalry in sports. Get hooked on the show. Everyone's talking about the Ultimate Fighter. It's all new Wednesday at 10 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. So nine seconds left and SMU may just put a knee down and be happy with a 10-7 lead against TCU that started the season, Joey, don't forget, 20th ranked in college football. Yeah, this TCU team needs to make some adjustments here in the second half. They're, they're getting outplayed by SMU right now, but SMU is truly shooting themselves to the foot, and, and they're taking themselves out of this ballgame. So it's halftime, 10-7, SMU. Let's go down. Here's Ryan Neese. Coach June, your defense is flying around, making a lot of plays. You've got to be happy with the way they're playing in the first half. Well, I'm proud of the guys for uh, competing this hard in the first half, but it's a long game, and we got to make the plays. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt us, not getting seven points down there. Now, offensively, you guys are moving the ball effectively as well, but you guys have come up short a little bit in the red zone. What do you guys need to do in the second half to put it in the end zone? Well, we need to uh, throw it and catch it and, and uh, run it in. I mean, it's not, not too hard. It's not rocket science here. All right, Coach, best of luck in the second right, half. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Ryan. Coach June Jones up by three at the half. 10-7 our score. We go to Rob Stone, Coy Wire, and P. Petros Papadegas in L.A. for the Pizza Hut Halftime Report. <laughs>
Well, this rivalry began in 1915, the old iron skillet. And right now, SMU is frying up some uh, ham and eggs. <laughs> They're up 10-7 at the half as we look at halftime numbers, and uh, really neither team has moved the ball particularly well. But if you look at the one pin, the one, the one uh, stat on the left side, and that's uh, the six penalties for 41 yards by SMU. But Joy, they lead by three. And remember, most of those penalties were thrown on that one TCU touchdown well, drive. So they had two costly ones: a pass interference in the end zone and a roughing the passer that extended TCU's touchdown drive you take that off the board you take away the interception that Garrett Gilbert threw going into the red zone and then only getting a field goal on first and goal on the one I mean this one could very easily be 17 nothing or even 21 nothing we welcome you back to Fox College football presented by Geico as we get start start uh, the third quarter here in Fort Worth SMU up by a count of 10 7 TCU will have the football to start this third quarter. Boykin, 7 of 16 in that first half. He'll have the football first. Just 73 yards. Goal line. Catalan. Has a head of steam, breaks a tackle, hits a wall, and knocked down at the 30, call it the 25-yard line. Special teams tackle by Jackson Mitchell, number 44. Remember, B.J. Catalan came in as the kick returner after the fumble by Brandon Carter, the very first play of that TCU game for, or excuse me, of that LSU game for TCU. DJ Catalan came in and took the next kick back 100 yards for a touchdown, so he's got the ability to go big on every on every play. Joey, I'm going to guess that Brandon Carter's got to play a bigger role for TCU in the second half. Well, they have to find some explosive plays. They're, they're just stagnant on offense right now, and part of that is SMU doing a great job, and part of that is, is simply not getting the ball into the hands of the players. Three wide receiver set, first down, 25-yard line. Boykin wants to throw on the first play of the second half and does. And on a knee is Doxon at the 36-yard line. That's a really nice completion for Trevon Boykin right there. That's a confidence that's builder. Exactly what it is. Coming out after the after the half, you've been in the locker room for a while, you're cold. Come out and just throw a nice strike on the sideline. It's good to see him step into that pass there. He's now 8 of 16 on the afternoon. TCU trying just to get something methodical moving here. Fresh downs, 36-yard line. Boykin, chase from the pocket, can't find the edge. Now he'll bring it near side. He's still on the run, picks up a block, and runs out of bounds at the 46-yard line. I can imagine the intensity in that TCU locker room. Ryan Neesh, you had a chance to talk to Gary Patterson. I did have a chance. I'll tell you, if I was a fly on the wall, we would have heard a lot of probably yelling down there. Gary Patterson was fired up as he was coming out, and he simply said, we got to be, we got to fight. We got to find a way to execute. We got to find a way to go out there and, and try to win this. We got to get our swagger back, is simply what he said. And that's what they have to do. We haven't seen it. We haven't seen that level of intensity yet from this team. If they get that in the second half, I promise them we have a chance to win the game. All right, thank you, Ryan. Cam White caught the ball. No room to run after he picks up yard, maybe two. It'll be second down and eight. You know, Patterson, as he said. He does expect a lot, and he kept using the word yesterday, Joey, swagger. Right. There's a belief, at least from Gary Patterson, and, and trying to instill this in the TCU program, that they can come into the Big 12 and not just be an also-ran, but be a contender for a championship every year. So Boykin back, shotgun, second down eight. On a play action, pedals back, wants the deep ball, throws it up, pop! That ball hangs in again, a marvelous play on the cover. Left side, Kenneth Aker, number 21. This is the second pass defended and great timing. That's exactly what it was. It was fantastic timing again. Stays with the coverage all the way down the field. A lot of times it's an easy pass or an easy ball to get called for pass interference because the DB keeps running into the receiver as the receiver stops to catch the ball, but he did a great job of playing both the receiver and the ball at the same time. Boy, what great play by the corner position right now by Ken Faker. That brings up third down. 
TCU one of seven on third down conversion so far in this game. Boykin in the pocket, flushed. Dances in trouble and slides short of the first down past the 50-yard line to the 48. And you know who made that play right there? It was, again, Kenneth Aker coming on a corner blitz. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced Trevon Boykin off of his read down the field, forced him to step up into the pocket and take off running before he wanted to. That was a, a fantastic effort coming all the way from the wide side of the field here on that blitz. Joe, every time SMU forces TCU off the field, they gain confidence. And they know that this is a game that they were not favored. In fact, there was a couple of, you know, looks of a couple, two, three touchdown favorites by TCU. Not the case so far. Ball's touched and down now at the 12-yard line. And SMU will have the football for the first time. Big plays, big plays in the secondary by SMU. Akers with the left hand and knocks it away. Mustangs on the road up by three. Oh, yes, look at how the weather has changed here in Fort Worth. The clouds are rolling in. We talked about possibilities of thunderstorm, rain, and it's getting a little, uh, a little scary outside. Scary for SMU. This may play right into TCU's hands because they're the team that grinds it out on the ground. Garrett Gilbert under center from the shotgun part as he throws on first down and throws it and complete. For a moment, Jason Verrett had the football trapped it as it made a little jump into his arms. And oh my. Receiver took a little stumble as there was contact made. You wonder if that was a miscommunication between Garrett Gilbert and his receiver or it was just a, a, a poorly thrown ball. Because this offense relies on communication between receivers and quarterbacks. Second down, 10. Gilbert out of the pocket. Rolls to his right. Throws back across his body. That ball was in the hands. And then came out. Kevin White, you talked about okay. SMU doing yes. some, some damage in the secondary. Great play from the corner, Kevin White, 25. Well, Kevin White, we talked about earlier, is going to get a lot of action with people going away from Jason Verrett. He did a great job against LSU, knocking a couple ball down, balls down in the back of the end zone. Had a great knockdown earlier on a deep post, and there makes a fantastic play to save a big gain by SMU. Mustangs, four of nine on third down conversions today. Wins it picked up a bit, blowing into the face of Gilbert. They need 10 yards to move the chains. Quick throw, hot slant, balls off the hands, nearly picked and incomplete. That ball was in the, nearly in the hands of Derek Kendrick, the strong safety, and off the hands of Darius Joseph. And now they'll exchange a punt. Well, you got to make that catch. If you're Darius Joseph, you, you do. I mean, there's, there's no other way around it. This offense is based on those type of plays. The quick throws, the quick slants, and then beating them down the field. They don't run the ball. SMU doesn't. Th those are their run plays, the quick slants and the bubble screens. Loftus will punt from the end zone. Carter awaits, hangs it high. Carter takes it, 43, down the sideline, 40, 35, tripped up, and knocked down at the 31-yard line. Well, there's that explosiveness we were talking about earlier. Brandon Carter. He's bringing back a little momentum for oh, TCU yeah. right now. Fort Worth, Texas. Boy, things have darkened up a little bit. The clouds have moved in. Feels like it's around 6 o'clock at night. The showers are moving in. Boykin and the Horn Frog start this drive at the 31-yard line. Down by three. Hand off up the middle, spinning out of the tackle is James. And if I'm TCU right now, I'm doing that again. I'm giving the ball right up the gut to Wayman James. I'm giving it to BJ Catalan. I'm establishing some sort of momentum. Put a stamp on this game. Well, the defense gave you a spark. Absolutely. With the rain changing, with the defense giving you the ball back deep in SMU territory, they need to establish they need to establish their will right now, and their will they want to run this football. Second down and six. Boykin 
Tough throw across the field. Flamina breaks a tackle, breaks another 10-5, and bucked out of bounds. Oh, impressive run by Ty Slonina, the freshman. Hey, you know who sprung this play, though? Watch Josh Doxson come in and just knock two SMU defenders off his guy here. Watch this. Bam! Springs his, springs his teammate up the sideline. That's some un unselfish play right there. A couple of Mustangs missed that tackle. One being Randall Joyner and a gain of 22. First and goal just outside the five-yard line. Balls fumbled away on the snap. Still loose. SMU's on the pile along with TCU. I saw a ball and a shoe. That's the second time oh. Pumpkins lost his shoe today. CTU, again, a chance to push the ball in. Snap, I don't know if the rain caused that, but it is falling at a pretty steady rate right now. An opportunity lost for TCU. The rain coming down, the student section into it, a big play up the sideline. And he had no chance. You know what? That's just off to his right side. There Bad was no snap. chance. That was below his knee. Trevon Boykin had no chance to catch that football. And now the sky's open. It's coming in buckets. It is raining. It's a wall moving through Fort Worth, Texas. Second down, goal, 25-yard line. Aaron Green in the backfield, number 22. He'll get the carry. Bounces outside, cuts back in, and he'll fall to the 18-yard line. Jay Scott, the strong safety with the tackle. You know what the ironic thing is, Craig? This rain has energized the crowd more than TCU's football team has today. The crowd is going right now. They're trying to give that energy to the TCU offense. You can feel it starting to pick up. TCU needs to capitalize on this, on this momentum. Third down and goal at the 18-yard line of SMU. Aaron Green. In the backfield, that ball is off the hands of Cam White. And he rips off his gloves. Ryan, you're standing right in the middle of it, and the weather has arrived. It's definitely arrived. We just saw Cam White right there. The ball slipped right through his hands, and that's one of the things that we got to pay attention to. This ball's now going to start to get slick. The rain is really coming down, and not only are we going to have to watch the way these ball carriers are handling the ball, but specifically the grass. This is a natural field turf, so you, you can see guys starting to slip around, and if that's something that happens, guys may start changing their plates to a longer stud. Let's check out the footing for Oberchrome, who will try a 35-yard field goal, and it's through the uprights, and we're tied at 10. Plant foot was solid, booted it from 35 to CU. On the board, we're tied at 10 on Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports 1, happy to bring you the Texas size rivalry between SMU and TCU, the Iron Skillet. Storyline today, one of them of many major miscues today. Penalties as well. Enjoy the rain. It's moved in, it's moved out, but there's another line of thunderstorms right behind the first. Yeah, we can see that, uh, that cloud coming over the top of the stadium. Ryan, don't lose the umbrella yet. That was a six-play drive and the 35-yard field goal by Oberchrome ties a game at 10. Into the end zone, no return, touchback. Got a game, under nine minutes left, third quarter. Yeah, we've got a chance for TCU to grab some momentum here. The rain revitalized the student section. They're screaming, they're yelling. You got points on the board for TCU. Now you got a wet ball in the hands of a team that throws it just about every time. This is a chance for TCU to get some pressure on Garrett Gilbert, maybe force a turnover, and really swing this momentum the other direction. Well, it's gonna test June Jones. Gilbert, 22 pass attempts. SMU averages 59 throws a game. We'll see if they continue to go with what June Jones uh, appreciates, and that's the pass game, or they run because of the wet ground. They'll go to Lemchi, hits the edge. 
30, 35, first down. And he's tossed out of bounds at the 37-yard line. So instead of throwing, yeah. you know what, let's see what happens. And test a little TCU on the edge. Well, that surprised me there. You know, I, I was watching the bottom of the, the field here where they ran a fake bubble screen, and I think they caught TCU off guard as well. They were playing some man coverage down in the bottom, focusing on those wideouts, and snuck the running back out the backside. Three wide receivers set, near side, one up top. First and ten. Lynchy off the right side, bust a tackle in another. How about a 10-yard and a 9-yard gain on back-to-back -back run plays? Chris Hackett with the tackle. That this may have been a busted play. Well, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, that's twice today we've seen SMU run the ball two times in a row. And I'm not sure that uh, June Jones' mentor, Mouse Davis, really the, the man who brought the run and shoot to professional football, would be, uh, I don't know if he'd be too happy about running the ball so often. So now first and 10. Balls at the 47. Gilbert looking to pass for the first time. Does. His ball is tipped up. And maybe that's an interception if he didn't get some defense from the wide receiver. Holman, the intended receiver, helped out Gilbert in a big way. Yeah, Keenan Holman turns into a defender, turns into a DB on that once the ball goes up in the air. But we may see more of those type balls as the field gets wetter, as the balls get wetter. The sun just popped out. We've got a player, Chris Hackett, shaken up. Helmet off, number one. So Jeff Hooker, number 28, comes in to play the weak side safety position. And back to work goes SMU. Nice stiff arm. Oh, beautiful open field tackle. John Kuntz. Got the legs of Limchi. And it wasn't going to work three times in a row. You can't run the ball three times if you're, if you're a run and shoot type offense. Come on, June. What are you thinking? June Jones. I'll tell you, it's an amazing road he's taken as he has opened up this spread offense and the clouds hang over Fort Worth third down 13 Gilbert pressure throws picked Carter dancing and steps out of bounds at the 33 yard line Lathan, give him credit, brought some pressure. Gilbert tried to dance away, and he threw that ball right into the arms of number 17. Oh, yeah, that, you're right. The interception was created by this pressure. What a great spin move. Right off the line, forcing Garrett to step up into the pocket, right where the pressure is. And he's trying to throw that corner route over the top, but Sam Carter just sinks off the underneath receiver and just drops right into the lane. Great disguise of coverage and great job reacting to the ball in the air by TCU's defense. Second interception thrown today by Gilbert, his fourth of the season. First and 10, 32-yard line. Boykin with Catalan alongside. He'll get the carry, rushes off the left side and pushes the pile to the 26-yard line. And again, we see B.J. Catalan keeping the ball in between the tackles. The coaches want to see this guy run with some toughness as opposed to trying to break every ball to the outside and spring it for a big play. Sometimes sometimes four or five yards, that's that's the right play. You saw Carter get some handshakes, his sixth pick of his career, second of the season, and has given TCU fine field position here. 10-10 ball game. Boykin with a long snap count. Here comes the rush. Play action up the middle. Boykin throws. Man coverage is busted up on the far side. And it's caught by Donson. Wide open on that far side at the 12-yard line. We know what's happening is TCU's ability to run the football is opening up these throwing lanes for Trevon Boykin and his wide receivers. Since the start of the second half, TCU has done a much better job running the ball with Wayman James and B.J. Catalan right up the middle, and it's forcing SMU to pay more attention to that when they didn't have to in the first half. 
New downs at the 12-yard line for TCU. Boykin inside on a keeper. And to the five-yard line goes Jermon Boykin. SMU saying the ball is out. Well, the officials will point. It's going to belong to... Now we got some pushing. And flags are out. Brandon Carter in the middle of that. Number three, Boykins with his hat off. And is that Gary Patterson who came out to bring Carter off the field? After the play, I'm supposed to let Condon offense. Number three, 15-yard penalty, down the pass, second down. Number two must leave the play to one play, and he's done the game off. How about that? Now on top of that penalty of 15 yards, Joey Boykin lost his hat. He has to come out for a play. And again, it's Carter who cost TCU, and that's been Patterson's biggest concern as you see Tyler Matthews, the redshirt freshman, come in for a snap. A redshirt freshman out of Wichita, Kansas. Joey, both these teams seem to just implode at the 20-yard line on both sides of the field. The mistakes all day inside the red zone by both TCU and SMU. Matthews, he's 0 for 2 in spot play so far this season. Second down, 21-yard line. Low snap. He's able to take it. Wants to keep it and falls back to the line of scrimmage. And maybe got a little bit too... Uh, too aggressive, too energetic, too uh, want to just on his first play in there just keep the ball and run. When instead he should have given that ball. He needs to read the option. He had two defenders sitting outside. You need to hand that ball off. And you know, a young freshman getting in the ball game knows he's not going to get too many opportunities. Want to take that one and make an impact. Well, he was looking right at Randall Joyner. Boykins back on the field, third down. Empty backfield. Working throws up top. Touchdown, Horn Frogs. Laid it on the hands of Ty Slanina. And the freshman with his first touchdown for TCU. Terrific throw by Boykin. What a strike. Over the top on a corner route. You know, once TCU started running the football in the second half, everything has opened up. Trevon Boykin has settled down. He's throwing the ball accurately. He's throwing the ball with authority. That was a fantastic ball over the top of the defense by Boykin. PAT to come, and the chip shot is good, and TCU, the reins came. TCU took advantage. It starts with the interception. Defense. It was thrown right at number 17, Sam Carter. And then the Horn Frogs connect on a touchdown up by seven. Craig, watch this. They run a smash route, a very simple concept. A hitch outside, a corner by the slot right there, and it's all off of this defender right here. When he squats on the corner, turns his back right there, Trevon Boykin knows he has the entire sideline to work with to throw that ball up and out, and he puts a strike over the top for a fantastic touchdown pass. Boy, what a great read and great throw by Javon Boyd. Flanina, true freshman, East Bernard, Texas, first touchdown for TCU in his career. Posted. Took a whack for the emotion. What a difference a half has made. I don't know what kind of 
inspirational speech Kerry Patterson made, but it has affected this entire TCU club. Well, he called on the rain gods. That's what that's what started it. As the rain came in, the crowd got into it. TCU fed off the crowd. They started running the ball and developed a little bit of a, 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 a momentum, a little bit of rhythm on offense, and then off that rhythm has translated into points. Five plays, 32 yards, and the freshman with the touchdown catch. TCU struggling now up by seven. Lynchy jumping over the Horn Frogs for a couple of yards to the 22 yard line. Quick snap. Lynchy took a stumble. Down at the 28 yard line. Boykin's got to feel better about himself a little bit, and again, that emotion is back. Well, it's back on both sides of the ball here. TCU's got a third and short here, a chance to get off the field quickly. And if you're SMU, you need to convert this third down and sustain a drive. Gilbert shotgun. Two back flush out of the backfield on his back foot, throws, man coverage up tall. The ball floated and nearly a catch at midfield. Off the hands of Joseph, and Kindred was running stride for stride, number 26. Well, Derek Kindred's a, a player that this coaching staff for TCU is very high on. A reserve to start the year is getting a lot of playing time with the with the injury to Elijah Olibo. But TCU's secondary has been doing it all day, providing tremendous coverage to allow the sacks and the pressure coming from the front four, there they just played great coverage and, and kept him from getting the first down. Loftus, end over end. Running up is Carter, it's out. Got a couple of officials trying to dig that ball out. Who's got it? SMU. Wow. Carter's having a rough afternoon, had a couple of pass receptions and then was whistled for the personal foul. And now he's muffed the punt. And SMU's got the ball at the 38-yard line at TCU. You know, this is the second time against LSU in that opening game. He fumbled the kickoff here. He muffed the punt. But neither team has been able to sustain anything. It seems like whenever you get a little momentum going in this game, there's a turnover or there's a penalty. Right now, it looks like there's an injury on the, uh, on the TCU sideline. We've got a timeout. So the uh, training staff attending to the injured player. Let's uh, step aside. Time for a Lowe's Never Stop Improving Game Break. Let's check in with Patrick O'Neill. Hey, Craig, thanks a, got a lot. Uh, South Carolina is back in this game versus UCF. This is Mike Davis, 53 yards. He scores, makes it 10-7. Right now, South Carolina has third and goal at the two they can punch it in they will have the lead in the third quarter we'll keep you updated craig and joy back to you all right patrick thanks so much i get a feeling old ball coach had the same talk that gary patterson had with his team at halftime both of them actually had their second string quarterbacks in as well javon boykin filling in for the injured casey paw hall and connor shaw going down early in that game for south carolina dylan thompson having come in that injured player, the nickelback, who's had a nice game for SMU, Aze Montez, redshirt freshman, able to walk off the field. SMU down by seven with the football. They swing it out to the flat. You got to catch it before you run. And he nearly dropped it on the hands. Hey, Craig, Marcus Mallett has been all over the field for TCU today. He's been in the backfield, causing Garrett to throw quickly. We saw him come free on that blitz early in the first half. Here he's out, out in space, making a tackle on a running back. Very impressive day from the linebacking position for, for Marcus Mallett. Loss of three, second down, 13 line. Alongside Gilbert in the backfield. Gilbert, again, all day to throw. Pressed down of the pocket and he slides to the 35 yard line. He'll be third down and long. But Craig, how many times have we seen Garrett Gilbert stand in the pocket and stand and stand and stand and wait? TCU coverage. They're doing an incredible job in coverage. 
They've got the All-American, Jason Verrett, out there. But the rest of the guys, I'm so impressed with what Kevin White is doing on the opposite side. And then Derek Kindred filling in for an injured Elijah Olibo. I mean, they've got they've got depth in this secondary. It's not just one guy who's making plays for them. Third down and nine. Gilbert looks left. Pressure from the right. Never saw it. Never saw James McFarland. Craig, watch him just beat his man. James McFarland just simply goes right around the right tackle for SMU. And like you said, Garrett Gilbert never saw it, had his eyes down the field. As a quarterback, you do not expect to get hit before you finish your drop. And that's exactly what happened to Garrett Gilbert there. Cameron Eccles Looper back to receive. He'll let the ball bounce into the end zone. TCU will have it up by seven. Fox Sports One starts off your Sunday mornings with Fox NFL kickoff. As the guys get you up to speed on what's happening around the NFL, then turn over to Fox to catch America's number one pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday. As the guys discuss Jay Cutler's heart hot start, get more football Sunday beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern. And it's only on Fox Sports One. Fort Worth, Texas. The iron skillet. That's what's up for grabs. TCU has turned it around here in the second half. And they've got the lead of seven. SMU had a 10-7 lead at the half. Penalties a big storyline as well for the Mustangs. So far in this third quarter, Boykin 5-7 for 70 yards and a touchdown. Just up this drive on the ground, a couple of busted tackles. Aaron Green running through one, two, three Mustangs. What a third quarter this has been. Yeah, and this is when the, the game turned around for TCU was that interception. And Trevon Boykin turning it into seven points. That's been the difference, is the turnovers, the penalties have not resulted in the amount of points we'd expect to see. You have to capitalize on your opportunities, and that's what Trevon Boykin and TCU did on that last drive. How about those numbers? 7 of 16, 73 yards, already 70 in this quarter for Boykin. First down, quick throw, far side. Pitch and catch, Cam Wright breaks a tackle. Another first down. How about a 12-yard throw? to the 44. Those plays are set up by running the ball effectively. And that's what TCU was not doing in the first half. They didn't, SMU didn't have to honor that up the middle. And they could stay out and they could play in space and they could split the difference and make the tackles on those wide receivers outside. Now they have to honor them up the middle. Well, TCU is gonna choose to let this clock run out this, as we end the third quarter. And I think you'll agree, third quarter, Gary Patterson, the speech, it worked at halftime. The emotions came with the rain here in Fort Worth. 15 minutes of football left in the iron skillet. 17-10, TCU. The, the student section is really on. Fear of the frog, that flag is being moved up the stands. As you look at our Chevrolet stats comparison the quarterbacks Gilbert today along with Boykin 160 yards a touchdown two picks by Gilbert Boykin settling down in the third quarter Joey 155 yards and a touchdown well, If you thought you saw Gilbert with 163 yards at halftime you were right one for seven for minus three yards and a pick in that third quarter First down 45 yard line quick throw near side right on the hands nice catch story 25-20, goodbye! Touchdown, TCU! Fifty-six yards. And again, nothing special. Just executing on offense. That quick screen set up by running the ball so well in the third quarter, just keep throwing it. Eventually, you're going to get a block and break it, and that's what happens for TCU. 
Great breakaway speed. A story put had that ball right on his hands, Joey. Turned it upfield and flew 56 yards. Seventh different receiver that Boykin's gone to in this game. Well, they're spreading the ball all over the place. Once you have the confidence and once you have a little momentum, you can start doing that. Trevon Boykin really struggled in the first half to get the ball to any receiver. Now they're running the ball well, and now you can distribute it around the field because you don't have that, that pressure on your outside receivers that SMU was providing early in, that, early in that first half. You know, we were in Waco last week, and it was a touchdown to plenty. This feels like a Baylor drive. Three plays, 80 yards, a minute 16. Ryan Nish, you had a... Uh, a beautiful view of that touchdown. I had a perfect view of that touchdown, and it was a great example of what the spread offense forces the defense to do. They have to make tackles in the open field, and if you miss one or two tackles, the wide receiver, the running back, whoever has the ball, has a chance to take it to the house. SMU's got to do a better job in the open field. Four-yard line, Blake Poston. And takes it out to the 20-yard line. Well, I've been asked this question a few times. What's a horn frog? It's a lizard. It is. It's a Prime, lizard. And the primary diet is red harvester ants. And if it, when it gets a little angry, it will squirt blood from its eyes to frighten the predator. Well, don't we all? <laughs> That's a pretty normal occurrence here in the, uh, here in in the, the booth? TV booth. Yeah, yeah. yeah you scare me on many occasions. <laughs> How's a horn frog a lizard? I never knew that. Again, we got a lot of that information from Gary Patterson yesterday, who knew quite a, quite a bit about the mascot. Incomplete. Holman tried to dig it out. Marcus Mallet, Sam, strong side linebacker. And we've got Verretta, or Verrett, pardon me, Jason Verrett, number two, the All-American, shaken up. Six picks and 63 tackles a year ago. You know, let's just look like he, he pulled up. And you see that arm hanging limp. I don't want to speculate, but that usually means something going on in that shoulder area. Second down. TCU trying to shut down the Mustangs. How about the second and third effort? And that's a wallop. Prescott line took a hit. Derek Kindred. The coaches were telling about him, telling us about him yesterday. Boy, take a listen to this hit. Five ten. Brought the heat, 202 pounder. Third down. Gilbert throws to the flat cock. Hits the edge and a first down. Darius Joseph they able to outrun Kendra that time. And they'll move the chains fresh down for the Mustangs. Finally, in the second half, Garrett Gilbert converted a first down. And now SMU has a little bit of, little momentum to work with. They need to sustain a drive if they're going to get back into this ball game. And they're going to have to do it by sh completing those short passes out in the flat and the quick hitches. Gilbert throws and it's out of bounds. Stops the clock. 13 and a half minutes left. Let's get a check in with Ryan Neese, right? So as you watch this SMU uh, offense, Craig, you guys got to be up there looking and saying, you know what, this is a little bit conservative compared to the first half. If they're running the ball on first and second down, they're dinking and dunking uh, with the pass game. They need to stretch the field right now. They need to find a way to go vertical. I mean, this is the way they're going to get back in this game and put some points on the board. Couldn't agree more. Second down, 10. Backs are split. Shotgun for Gilbert. Again, 
coverage downfield forces that errant pass. And, you know, Joey, again, you go back to the reason they can't go vertical is because the secondary has played some good football. Well, they played tremendous football for TCU on, that, on the defensive side of the ball. But, but this is the merging of the two offenses. This is June Jones' vertical run and shoot merging with Hal Mummy's air raid offense. Remember when he was at Kentucky? Mike Leach was his offensive coordinator. And Hal Mummy's offense is, is, is based on short little strikes. Whereas June Jones likes to get down the field, I think you're seeing the merging of the two offenses right here for SMU. Yeah, Hal Mummy, the passing game coordinator in his first year. Three wides, near side, pressure, and sacked again is Gilbert Terrell Lathan. Gilbert had his eyes downfield. He's been sacked twice in this half, and he never has felt the pressure from the backside. Well, and again, the defensive end just gets right around the tackle. Jonathan Ashcraft for, for SMU. Gary Gilbert had no idea that was coming. You can't, you, you can't defend it if you don't know it's coming. Cameron Eccles, Looper, back to receive on a line drive, skips right into his hands at the 30-yard line. Makes a cut, spins out of the tackle, here he goes. Oh, another nifty move, 50, breaks a tackle, 40, 35, 30, Looper. 20-yard line and is thrown down at the 19. 42-yard punt, 50-yard return. Momentum, 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 momentum for TCU here. Coming up with big plays in, in, in every area now. Special teams, offense, defense. Remember, Brandon Carter was in as a punt returner last time. He dropped... Muff that punch. Some beautiful blocking out front. Flanina, a freshman. That's how you earn your stripes, special teams play. Yeah. And how about Brandon Carter coming over, giving his teammate a slap on the helmet, saying, good job. They take the reverse. They go to Catalan. And into the pile it goes past the 15. They'll push it to the 14-yard line. Is this the same Horn Frog team we saw in the first half? No, 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 it is not. This Horn Frog team is being aggressive up front. They're running the balls in between the tackles, and that's allowing Trevon Boykin to throw easy balls outside to quick hitches, to quick screens, quick slants. I wonder if Boykin, though, has been motivated by Casey Paul Hall, who's uh, injured week two, broke his left arm. He was slated to return and start this year. Boykin was a wide receiver, then asked to come back to play QB. And Paul Hall's over there trying to mentor this young player. And so far in the second half, he's, uh, he's done a fine job. Wayman James to the nine-yard line and a first down. There's Paul Hall in his career, 11-2, and two, troubles suspended in 2012 came back one and one and then he's missing his second straight game as he was injured against uh, southeastern louisiana in week two but yeah gotta be a tough tough position for casey paul you give this young man a lot of credit after going through all of the troubles last year got his got his life in order got back on the football field could have been a tremendous story still can be because he's done all the things right to get back to this position High formation, Boykin on a keeper, drives the left side, stacked up, and maybe to the six-yard line. But Paul Hall, he broke his non-throwing arm. That's the left arm. So again, no one gives you a, really a timetable, but again, Joel, you gotta go four to six weeks at least. Maybe you could come back and play with a soft cast, but here's the question. If Boykin gets into a groove, what do you do? Right, exactly. That's that's the dilemma. I think you, you cross that bridge when you come to it if you're Gary Patterson. Right now, you're trying to win ball games right now, but there's the possibility that he could come back right in the middle of this Big 12 schedule. Three wide receivers up top. We'll put Catalan behind Boykin. We get the carry. Right side, muscles in. Touchdown, TCU! about that play, Craig. Even though SMU had everybody up at the line of scrimmage showing full blitz, TCU still said, I'm gonna run the ball right up the gut. Watch the pressure coming off the edge. Unblocked man, Catalan just puts his head down and runs right through him. You're not gonna stop. Him. 
24 unanswered points as the chip shot is up and good. TC trailed by three at the half. They've blown this game open, 31-10. And a nice run, Catalan powers in for a touchdown. Paul Hall, I can't play, but I'm cheering. We'll be back on Fox Sports 1. SMU was kind of coasting, 10-7 at the half. Gary Patterson went to the locker room. You see the first nine possessions, Joey produced just seven points. The last four, 24. Well, that's all come off the, the switch of momentum, that interception. That interception by Carter there in the third quarter really just flipped everything for TCU. You know, and also the fact that the three of the drive started in SMU territory. It was a short field. Kicks away, posting two yards deep. Has a hole up the middle, nice run back, and he is carry. He carries a couple of uh, horn frogs down to the 34-yard line. Hey, coming up next, Fox College Saturday continues as Louisiana Tech battles Army from the Cotton Bowl. You'll see it here on Fox Sports 1. And then on Fox, it's a Pac-12 battle. Arizona, undefeated, 16th-ranked Washington. Fox Sports is your home for college football all season long. Keith Price and the Huskies in that new stadium. Watch out for the dogs. Gilbert throws old tough pass in traffic and he threads the needle at the 48. Darius Joseph. Hackett was on coverage, but a nice toss out to Joseph. SMU's got to hope to strike early, and then, of course, this game has had a lot of fumbles and miscues and flags, and the official's going to stop into... First charge, timeout. For a timeout. TCU. TCU wants a timeout. Gary Patterson's out there barking. He's got the lead, a 31-10 on Fox Sports 1. Super fan and can handle a golf club pretty well. JJ Henry is in the stands today. Underneath the pass is caught and thrown down as Johnson. Derek Kendrick. Kendrick getting a little physical out there. There's Henry, class of 98. I thought I'm pretty impressed. He was pitching balls to the uprights. I'd like to go out there and play a round or two with him. PGA Tour member, I hope he hit the uprights. I want to, I, he I split, split them. the uprights. I want to see him hit the uprights. SMU second down, 49 yard line of TCU. Gilbert, he's been rocked all day, hurried all day. Ball is batted out. Sam Carter gave it a slap. Ball came out, and SMU recovers. Hey, Craig, this TCU defense leads the Big 12 in sacks and interceptions. But Coach Patterson told us yesterday that those sacks are not created by the front four and their pressure. It's created by the coverage. It's created by the secondary that's doing such a great job. Look at what Garrett Gilbert oh, has had to deal with today. What a rough He's day. been on his back. He's been running for his life. Again, another sack there created by the secondary. Third down and a mile. Again, pressure. They throw up a bubble screen. How about that? Ball is batted up and picked off. A lineman's dream. J.J. Henry's on his feet. Matt Anderson, who got the start at right end, put up the big paw and pulled down the pick. Sacks and interceptions for this TCU defense. They're momentum killers for an offense and they're momentum creators for this team. Oh, a rough day continues for Garrett Gilbert. Heads up play by TCU defensively on top, 31-10. Now Matt Anderson, interception, and it's a 31-10 game. His first career pick. He had knee troubles back in 11 and 12, and he's back healthy. And what a play that was! And for the fourth time of the last five drives, TCU is in SMU territory to start a drive. And Wayman James to the 32. Hey, Craig, I've been here. 
when everything just seems to be going wrong. Watch Garrett Gilbert's reaction. Just on a screen pass, the last pass you expect to be intercepted. Trying to get something started for SMU. This second half has just been, just been flat. Nothing's working. Clock runs up on eight minutes left. Boykin alone in the backfield, he'll run. Hits the edge. SMU strings it out. A couple of big blocks along the sideline. And Boykin works his way to the 26 yard line. Let's check in with Ryan. Joey and Grant, we just saw Garrett Gilbert and how frustrated he was. But, you know, one of the adjustments that TCU made on defense, and Coach Patterson told me this as they were coming out, is we were going to sit on them and play man to man coverage. They didn't, he didn't feel like they had any outside threat. SMU didn't have the speed to get vertical. So they were going to sit on them, play man free, and force them to throw underneath. And they're breaking in all these balls. That's why nobody's getting open right now. That's a good point, Ryan. Third down short. Hand off, bumping outside, James, and he is strung out. He's going to be short, fourth down, call it two. You know, Patterson, getting back to that comment by Ryan yeah, Neese, he talked to us yesterday ex exactly about coaches that are able to make adjustments at halftime and the success that comes with that. Well, not just at halftime. I mean, Coach Patterson makes adjustments all the time, and that's why his defense has been so successful. Number one in total defense in the NCAA five times in the last 12 years. Coach Patterson has this defense. It's a defensive machine here at TCU. When you got guys like Jason Verrett and on the other side, Kevin White playing fantastic football, you can do those type of things. Greenbauer, the free safety, number 22, the player down for SMU. You have to ask, where do you believe TCU's place is in the Big 12? Mm. Baylor is an offensive machine. You have to fear Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, the reigning champ, lost Colin Klein, Arthur Brown. Where's the potential for this TCU team, or where are they right now? I think that's two different questions. Right now, I think they're middle of the pack because they're inconsistent. But if they can put all the pieces together, eliminate the mistakes, get Trevon Boykin to, to play turnover-free football like he has today, they can be a very scary team in the Big 12. Fourth and two, TCU one of six on fourth down conversions. It's a tough one this time. Up top, caught, coming back to help, Brandon Carter. Oh, what an up and down game he's had. Hey, you know what, and I, I'm sorry, you may say that that ball was way short, but you try running backwards to your left, throwing the ball all the way across his body. Watch Boykin here. He's going backwards, he's going to his left, he sees the guy wide open, just get him a chance. Great job by Brandon Carter coming back and making a catch, but just even getting the ball in the general area was a, was a feat for Boykin. Great recognition. Fresh downs at the 11-yard line. High snap taken. A little slip on that handoff. Catalan tried to cut, and he lost his footing. We had some rain earlier in the third quarter. It's still a cloudy day. The clouds kind of just looming over the stadium, but no rain. Second down for Boykin. James along back. Oh my. Blew the play up. Boykin picks it up. And SMU, that could be the hit so far of the year in football. Wow. Boy, and that happened so fast, I couldn't even get a number on who that guy was coming in. But you know what? He was on a beeline. A beeline for Brandon Carter here. Who's that, Yanga? Number two, Jonathan Yanga. Wow. On a beeline for the reverse. Doesn't even bother with the play fake up the middle to, to, to Wayman James. Says, I'm going after Boykin, and I'm going to take Carter with him. Nearly knocked his shoes off. Well, that's not hard to do today. <laughs> True. <laughs> He's lost a couple, hasn't he, today? Boykin. Handoff up the middle. Breaks a tackle. James still fighting at the... 15 10 it takes a one two three mustangs with and out of bounds jay scott made the initial hit but an impressive run by wayman james just a tough runner like we said earlier the all-time leader at tcu in yards per carry 
it's nice to see him running confidently because that's what you lose most when you have an ACL in here, when you have a big knee injury, is you lose the confidence to make those cuts, to know that you can take a hit and keep on going. It's nice to see him running, running hard today. Offensive coordinator Jared Anderson told us straight up, look, I brought him to the sideline. I told him, you've got to start opening things up. You've got to forget about it and just play. 26-yard field goal attempt. It's up and good. Overchrome connects. What do you expect? It's the iron skillet game, right? It's the rivalry of SMU, TCU, and oh, it gets physical. In Fort Worth, we'll be back on Fox Sports 1. Well, I'm going to take you into a secret spot. This could be the difference maker for TCU in the second half. It's the cryo sauna. Ooh. And Joey, you jumped in yesterday. Oh, yeah. You're feeling a little, a little sore. It's the whole body therapy. It lasts yeah, three minutes. Cool. You made it two. The temperature drops as low as minus 150 degrees. TCU players use it. They also like to use the ice bath. But yeah. Joe, you were a brave yeah. man yesterday. <laughs> and you went, I think, I think we got well, you down you go. to you one. Got, you got the nitrogen coming out of the tunnel. Out of That's it. their secret sauce right there. I had to get some of it. 151 51. degrees below zero. They usually go three, but you were able to manage they two. They only allowed me to go two <laughs> since it was my last, my first uh, treatment. That's it. It's, it's, it's a marvelous thing how you repair and uh, the body in this game. Flag is out on the return down at the 31-yard line. But back in the day, of course, if you played the game or any any athlete knows, ice is your friend, right? Yeah, you they just take it to a another level. Of ice. That's what you used to do. You just fill up, a, fill up a garbage can with ice and you stand in it. Now you just stand in a cryo cell. Very few schools with that technology right now, though, Craig. TCU's new facility is beautiful. Yes. Marvelous job. Great stadium. Locker room treatment facility. Really top notch here at TCU. Gilbert goes back to work. In a rough second half. Gilbert on a quick throw. Into the flat pitch and catch. And TCU's been on that play all afternoon. They'll pick up three. Time for our Right Stuff Player of the Game, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. No, it's not Boykin. Right Stuff, it was all about the TCU defense. Seven sacks, four takeaways in this game, and they turn it up a notch in the second half. Gilbert with time. This, this time, though, overthrows Joseph as he had man coverage with, or Kendrick, had man covered with Joseph. Wait, how about this TCU defense holding the run and raid offense to 23 yards through the air in the second half? So 23 yards, negative three yards passing in the third quarter. Garrett Gilbert had 163 at halftime. He's only at 186 right now. I never thought I'd see that from a defense against this offense. Pass caught. In the open field goes Jeremy Johnson. And they'll mark him at the 11-yard line. First and 10 with 335 clock runs here in Fort Worth. Backfield split for SMU. They've been shut out thus far in the second half. Gilbert, pressure, throws it, incomplete. And Jeremy Johnson in the area, but again, pressure, pressure has been the key for TCU's defense. This time it was provided by Jonathan Anderson. Well, the pressure's been able to get there because of the coverage by the secondary. Garrett Gilbert is literally sitting in the pocket as the, as the clock ticks away. And, and I'll tell you, there, there is no more unnerving feeling than sitting in that pocket as a quarterback knowing you have to wait for a route to break open, but not sure if you're going to be protected. Second down, 10, 12-yard line. Gilbert swings it out on a slingshot. Touchdown, SMU. Darius Joseph took it to the house. He was rocked at the goal line, but gets the ball past the plane for six. Well, unfortunately, it's too little too late for SMU. 
they needed to be doing this at the start of the second half when they had a chance, when they had a lead, when it was really the, their own mistakes that were keeping them from being up 17-0 or 21-0 there in the half. But they've disappeared in the second half. SMU's missing a man with a point after. He's on the field. Chase Hover out of Plano, Texas, ready to try the PAT. Six for six on the season. And make it now seven for seven. Point after is good. Three minutes left. 34-17 here in Fort Worth. Let's go back to Los Angeles. A game break, and here's Patrick O'Neill. What a game for Mike Davis, South Carolina running back. He has three touchdowns, 145 yards. This is a definition of a carry, but UCF just scored. They got the two-point conversion. It is 28 to a 16, I should say, in the fourth. 28-18, excuse me, in the fourth quarter. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. South Carolina turned it up very much like here. Both teams struggled in the first half. South Carolina finds their stride in the second, as does TCU. You know, one thing we haven't mentioned today, Craig, is, is, is Devontae Fields, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year last year as a freshman. 18 and a half tackles for loss, 10 sacks. He's not even on the field today. Out with a foot injury, missed the first first game because of the suspension and then hurt his foot coming back but how good could this defense potentially be with him back in the lineup when he gets healthy TCU is anticipating an onside so they got the the hands team up top along the scattered along the 45 yard line over kicks it oh my a little bounce and a touchdown on the way. TCU running away. Ladarius Brown, right place, right time, and rumbles in for the touchdown. It could not have taken a better hop for TCU. And, and what's it, what is it, Murphy's Law? Anything that can go wrong will. They tried to fire an onside kick at him, so it bounced off his chest up in the air, and they could make a play on the ball, but you know what? He snags it. Snags it right in his chest and takes it back for a touchdown. How often do you see that happen? 45 yards. And I think Mr. Fields, he's got the... <laughs> he wanted to run with him. Yeah, if he didn't have a foot injury, I think he might be running with him. <laughs> oh, how things have changed. You know, you were smelling a little upset, Bruin, at halftime, 10-7 SMU, and now it's a 41-17 game for the Horned Frogs. Well, TCU, after the loss 16 days ago to Texas Tech, up next, they've got Oklahoma. They've got the Jayhawks, followed by a road game at Oklahoma State, Texas at home against uh, home against West Virginia as well. Oh, that's a tough schedule in the Big 12. You know, it's an interesting schedule. Right now, Oklahoma State losing at West Virginia. Kansas is down. Texas is not playing up to their potential. They've been everywhere. Them. Absolutely. If you can get through this Oklahoma, there's a possibility of really making some noise in this Big 12 that is just wide open. Turn on the kick on a touchback. Fox Sports Supports is proud to partner with Stop Out Bullying, the na leading national anti-bullying organization for kids and teens in the U.S. Stop Out Bullying focuses on preventing bullying and digital abuse. It educates against racism and hatred, defers violence in schools and online, and helps at-risk students. To learn more, just visit stopoutbullying.org. That's a great cause. Take advantage and help out. Gilbert back to work. Throws on the hands and bumped out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Number 15, Jeremy Johnson. He was the leading receiver, Joey, a year ago for SMU. 67 grabs. 
nearly 700 yards, but only three touchdowns. I think you and I were talking in the car earlier, just a lot of passing offense, a lot of touchdowns through the air just have not occurred yet for June Jones. I think it's Garrett Gilbert's, as he becomes more comfortable with this offense, those touchdown passes will happen. The, you know, when you try and force things as a quarterback, that's when you turn the ball over, that's when you make mistakes. When you just play within the offense and let things go, that's when good things happen. And, well, with the exception of sometimes today, you're starting to see at least the, the three previous games for Garrett Gilbert, you were starting to see that comfort level increase in this offense. Uh, he came in with a school record three straight 300-yard games or more. But again, scoring has not happened through the air. On the hands catch, out of bounds goes Keenan Holman. That stops the clock, a minute 55 to play. He came in, Gil Garrett Gilbert, over 1,000 yards through the air. Two, two touchdown throws. Yeah. Doing a very good job and, and has really improved from his 15 touchdown, 15 interception season last year. Put up a lot of yards last year, but but like you said, didn't convert the touchdowns and threw a few too many interceptions for, I'm sure, what Coach Jones would like. Nice pass, probably the best throw of the day. Caught at the 41-yard line over the top and dropped it on the hands of Johnson. Well, again, just too little too late. Where was this in the third quarter? Where was this when the momentum was when the momentum was jumping over to the TCU sideline. It, I think the rain, I mean, this, this is a guess, but you know, it must have scared SMU away from throwing this ball, the, the ball like this. Another pick. Oh, my. Running room. Carter got a blocker. Touchdown, Horn Frogs. It pours, right, Craig? Oh, it poured. It, it poured, poured in the third, the field, and it's pouring now. But no rain, just points. 66 yards on the interception. Return for a touchdown. Can we update that player of the game stat? Seven sacks and, and five takeaways now? The second by Carter today. Boykins cheerlead. He was there to the get back, man. <laughs> the get back coach. <laughs> PAT, chip shot up and good. 42 attempts today, thrown by Gilbert, picked off four times. And this game now a runaway for TCU. 48 to 17. How about this TCU defense, Joey? Well, yeah, how quickly a defensive effort can change the complexion of the ball. Absolutely. I mean, this was, we uh, the story at halftime was how SMU had squandered opportunities. How they moved the ball up and down the field, had chances to be up 17-0, 21-0, but through penalties and turnovers, kept TCU in the ball game. And then in the third quarter, the defense for TCU just took over and took every bit of life out of this SMU football team. You know, defensively, TCU has now returned five of its last 33 picks for touchdowns. Let me do my math, may I? Go for it. A little over one out of six interceptions equals a touchdown? Okay. They, they, How'd I do? Not bad. They touched that at Kansas State. <laughs> they did. Got a timeout? Now, Gary Patterson is about three yards onto the football field. And he gets the timeout. TCU. 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. An onslaught. Pressure. Mistakes. Interceptions. TCU played basically flawless football. Well, that interception by Sam Carter gave the ball to TCU. Trevon Boykin made a great throw up over the top for the touchdown. They ran the ball better, which allowed him to throw the quick screens outside, which allowed him to break the tackle to take that one for a the next one for a touchdown. Everything played off of one another, and it all started with that first interception by Sam Carter. Two different sides of emotion. TCU feeling like they got things back. They started slow. Joey, no questions. The 16-day layoff had to be an issue. It is. It's tough to come back after being gone for so long. Get back into the into the game mentality. But I think
think you've seen what this TCU defense is capable of when they're really rolling. Poston covered up at the 16-yard line. Patterson, I told you he was barking earlier. Is it 3 o'clock yet? <laughs> it's not, he's got 30 no, more minutes got, to bark, yeah. yeah. He started barking at 11. It's uh, Central time. It's 2.30 2 nearly in the Midwest. You look at the uh, SMU offense, the first three games, five turnovers today, five giveaways. Limchi, the sophomore out of Katy, Texas. He'll pick up four as the clock is up on about a minute left. You know what's really impressive about this TCU defense right now, Craig, is with the absence of Devontae Fields, the action's getting spread all over the place. Up into this game, they had eight sacks by seven different players. Everybody's getting in on this action and the action for the TCU defense. And when you have guys that buy into your system, that that play as a team, that aren't worried about getting the stats and getting the sacks in their own pocket and are happy to occupy a blocker so that somebody else can get home, boy, that's when you become a scary defense to play against. Joey, does this type of game put a little fear back into Big 12 opponents? I mean, the first half, you're going to sit back and go, oh, boy, the TCU's struggling, but I'm going to guess Oklahoma's going to want to look at the second half in a big way. I think it makes people second, at least take a second look at the second half. You know, we all know that Jason Verrett is, a, is an All-American, is a tremendous corner, but I think it makes you take a look at the secondary as a whole. Kevin White played a fantastic ball game today when he knew that every ball was going to come at him. And the safeties for TCU were aggressive. Sam Carter with a couple picks. It was, it was all over the board today. SMU returns home next week to take on Rutgers. And as you know, TCU will be at Oklahoma. One more play, seven seconds left, and a dominating second half by TCU. They'll hand it off. And the clock runs dry here in Fort Worth. The iron skillet belongs to TCU. A dominating second half. For Joey Harrington, Ryan Neese, Craig Bowlerjack, as we say so long from Fort Worth, the final score, 48-17. Coming up after a short break, we'll send you back to Rob Stone and our Fox College Saturday studios in Los Angeles. You've been watching Fox College Football right here on Fox Sports 1.